Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next topic for today, and that would be cyber security, a growing sector with good jobs for Singaporeans. With that, let us welcome Mr. Wong Chun Wong, Director of Strategic Resources and Policy Office Workforce Development from the Ecosystem Development Division of Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore, who will share with us eight different reasons why students should explore cybersecurity as a career. Over to you, Mr. Wong. Hi, uh, thanks, Juliana. Yeah, and thank you for the great sharing before that, uh, before me, uh, my friends, uh, Victor and Gavin. So, um, good good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome back. Um, um, welcome to the symposium. My my name is Chen Bong. I'm from the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore. Uh, my team in CSA organizes this symposium these two mornings. And I hope that through the talks and discussions, educators like you will be able to gain a deeper appreciation of cybersecurity, as well as the career opportunities in this field. We hope that you can then bring back the knowledge to your respective schools and inspire students to consider cybersecurity as an education and career choice going forward. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, let me start by giving you a short introduction to CSA. CSA was set up about five years ago. Uh, as the central a government agency to provide end-to-end -end oversight on cybersecurity matters at the national level. We report to the minister in charge of cybersecurity, who is concurrently the minister for communications and information. CSA's primary resp responsibility is to keep our cyberspace safe and secure. And to do so, we protect our critical information infrastructure from cyber attacks to ensure national security, we provide assurance and trust needed so that Singapore can reap the full benefits of a digital economy. And we protect our citizens in a way, uh, in our digital way of life as we rely more and more on the cyberspace. Next slide, please. In today's talk, I will attempt to answer one question. Why students should explore cybersecurity as the career and education choice? I will try to explain to you the trends in the cybersecurity industry and job market, our national strategy, and the career and um, education pathways for students who choose to take this path. I have also invited a special student guest who will share with you uh, his journey in cybersecurity thus far. And I hope that you will bring uh, some, this will bring some inspiration to educators like you. Um, in the rest of my presentation, I give you eight reasons to answer uh, this question that I posed. Next slide, please. The first reason, cybersecurity has gone mainstream. Just a decade ago, most people would not have heard of or paid much attention to the word cybersecurity. In most organizations, IT security was nothing more than the job of the IT department, which deploys firewalls and on the computer networks and maintains antivirus software patches. But this has changed significantly over the past decade because the world is now getting more and more connected through the cyberspace. In Singapore, we are embarking on our journey towards a smart nation, and digitalization is transforming the way we work, learn, shop, and play. So as SMS Janiel earlier alluded to, the COVID-19 pandemic has only accelerated the digitalization process with work from home, online shopping, and home-based learning arrangements. All this presents lots of opportunities and targets for cyber attackers and cyber criminals to disrupt our activities and to steal information from us, from us. So to give you a sense on the scale, globally, the number of connected Internet of Things or IoT devices has grown exponentially in the recent year to over, two, 20, uh, over 20 billion. And this number is expected to further increase with the introduction of 5G mobile networks over the next few years. Many connected smart home devices are not secure, allowing attackers to compromise data security and launch DDoS attacks. An example is the Mira Important attack in 2016. Therefore, cybersecurity is key to keeping our critical networks and, safe, and systems safe and building trust for transactions in the digital world. Cybersecurity is a fundamental enabler in our journey towards a smart nation and digital economy. Demand for cybersecurity professionals will continue to grow in the foreseeable future. In other words, Together with other emerging technologies like big data, cloud, AI, 5G, and IoT, cybersecurity has gone mainstream. Next slide, please. The reason number two, cybersecurity is a growing sector with good jobs. According to Gartner, 
our domestic cybersecurity market in 2019 was about 1.15 billion Singapore dollars and is growing at a fast rate. Based on the IMDA's annual survey on Infocom Media Manpower last year, there were about 5,900 cybersecurity professionals in Singapore in 2018. This is about two and a half times the figure four years ago. The demand for cybersecurity professionals is also projected to grow quickly at an annual rate of more than 10% to over 7,800 people next year. We therefore see the need to quickly ramp up the supply of talents in the industry. I must also add that the strong growth in cybersecurity professionals is not confined to Singapore. According to the latest ISC Square survey a report published just last week, globally, the number of cybersecurity professionals has grown to 3.5 million, up from 2.8 million just one year ago. Next slide, please. So in this slide, the diagram on the left shows the in-demand cybersecurity skills in Singapore. As you can see, skills with higher demand include cyber, uh, cyber risk management, security administration, and security, administra uh, and security assessment and testing. Over the years, cybersecurity professionals are moving up the value chain in tasks that they perform. Automation and machine learning has helped to reduce the reliance on the human eyeballs on threat detection and one uh, level one analysis. Cybersecurity professionals can then shift to roles that are, cannot be easily done by machines, such as cyber risk management, digital forensics, and cyber attack simulation. So the diagram on the right shows the upward salary trend for the cybersecurity professionals over the past few years, as indicated in the purple line. Next slide, please. Cybersecurity is an interesting and diverse field. The cybersecurity professionals is no longer represented by the stereotypical, uh, serious looking, geeky young man with the eyes fixed on the computer screen, monitoring rows and rows of data and speaking jargons that most people won't understand, not anymore. Like what Ali has alluded in her earlier speech, cybersecurity has become a diverse field with roles for people from different training and background, for men and women, and for the young and the more experienced. The NIST cybersecurity framework, which is developed by the US National Institute of Standards and Technology, is a widely used model that guides organizations, uh, guides how organizations should identify your assets, um, uh, should identify your assets, protect the systems, detect threats, and respond to and recover from cybersecurity incidents. It also illustrates the roles and processes involved. If you look closely into each of these uh, entails, you will notice that the diversity of skills needed while many of these involve deeper computer science or IT security knowledge, there are those where skills from disciplines like audit, psychology, marketing, law, law enforcement, crisis communications, and political science will come, in, will come in to be very useful. Furthermore, there are other skills or other, so other cybersecurity roles that are not even listed here. And that include um, things like training and certification, threat analytics and info sharing, strategy and policy, etc. Another point I want to make is that traditionally, when we talk about cybersecurity, we mostly refer to cyber uh, security in the IT networks, the internet, the, your corporate networks, your and systems, your personal computers. However, cybersecurity is not limited now to just cyber, uh, to IT networks. They also impact OT network, or what we call operational technology systems, which belongs to more of the engineering field. So going forward, we will need more and more engineers who understand OT security as well as cybersecurity professionals who understand electrical and mechanical engineering systems so that we can protect our power plants, our MRT systems, our 5G systems, and others from cyber attacks. Um, next, please. Next slide, please. So. Um, to, um, the fourth reason is that uh, I would advocate that together we can collectively stop the bad guys. <clears throat> you know, there are many clever bad guys out there. Many of them are cyber criminals who are looking for financial gains to phishing and ransomware. In recent months, ransomware attacks has been uh, increasing in frequency and scale. Ransom demand from big corporations can now be in the, be in the millions of dollars. And other than cyber criminals, there are also state actors who conducts cyber espionage for the state or commercial secrets to 
assist, uh, what we call as advanced persistent threat or APT attacks. This diagram here shows the cyber queue chain originally defined by Lockheed Martin, which demonstrates the steps the APT hacker uses to infiltrate your system, search for valuable data or critical, contro critical controls inside the systems, and either exfiltrates the data or disrupts your functions. So to counter the bad guys, we need many clever good guys to depend on the, uh, networks. We can train our people and make our system more robust against phishing and ransomware. We can disrupt the APT actors by disrupting the Q chain. So the good, the good guys should learn about ethical hacking because you can be a good defender only if no, you know how the attacker works. So in our SG Cyber Youth Training Boot Camps, we teach te hacking techniques. But to complement that, we also teach ethical behaviors by inviting the policeman to give a talk in our boot camps. So to summarize this slide, we invite students and others who, con who to consider being, uh, playing the good guys to stop the bad guys from doing their job. We will continue to need more and more of such good guys to protect our smart nation, to protect our digital economy, our critical infrastructure, our military defense systems, and of course, our way of life. Next slide, please. Reason number five, cybersecurity is now a national priority. The Singapore cybersecurity strategy was launched by PM Lee in 2016. This national strategy paints our priorities for a resilient and trusted cyber environment for Singapore. It helps us to frame a common vision and sets goals and priorities in cyberspace, in cybersecurity, sorry. CSA works closely with our stakeholders to achieve the common goals. The strategy has four pillars. Number one, for building a, a resilient infrastructure. The goal is to protect a list of critical information infrastructure or CIIs. This, include, uh, this ensures that the essential services that we need for our day-to-day -day lives are not disrupted by cybersecurity threats. We have 11 CII sectors, including energy, transport, healthcare, etc. Some of the CIIs run on IT networks, some on the engineering or OT systems. CSA works with the CII sector leads to protect all of them. Two years ago, the Cybersecurity Act came into force, and this gives uh, CSA greater powers to secure our CIIs. The law also makes it compulsory for CII operators to report cybersecurity incidents. The second pillar in the strategy is creating a safer cyberspace to, uh, up, to uplift the general posture of the cyberspace. We do this by promoting cybersecurity awareness and adoption among businesses, institutions, and the public, uh, general public. As, a, as part of this pillar, CSA works closely with the Singapore Police Force to combat cybercrime. The next two pillars, a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem and a strong international partnerships, supports the first two pillars. On developing a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem, CSA looks to build capabilities to address our national security needs, and at the same time, build up an industry that provides good jobs high value jobs for Singaporeans. Last but not least, it is important to build strong partnerships with both internationally and bilaterally, as well as create opportunities to facilitate exchanges on key issues, including norms of responsible state behaviors in cyberspace, as well as the importance of uh, capacity building among regional countries. So we do this through events such as the Singapore International Cyber Week or SICW, and workshops under our ASEAN Singapore Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, ASCCE. Uh, next slide, please. Reason number six, we are growing the cybersecurity ecosystem in Singapore. Now, there are two reasons why we want to develop a vibrant ecosystem, as I mentioned earlier. First, for national security. As our economy becomes more and more digitalized, <clears throat> we need more and more professionals and with deep expertise and companies with deep technical capabilities to protect our networks and systems against cyber attacks. So, so that we can <clears throat> not be too dependent on foreigners in terms of emergency. Singaporeans are needed in government security agencies. The second reason is that the, oppor uh, is the opportunity to create um, uh, value for the economy and create good jobs of Singaporeans and residents. This supports our aspiration for Singapore to become a global Asia cybersecurity hub, exporting our solutions and expertise to serve the cybersecurity needs of other countries 
especially those in our region. Last year, Singapore launched the SG Cyber Talent Initiative. This is a national initiative aimed to, at firstly to build up a strong pipeline of talents who will join the profession, and secondly, to enhance the skills and development of existing cybersecurity professionals. My colleague Shin Yi will, my colleague Shin Yi will have a session tomorrow to share with you more details on the various programs under SG Cyber Talent. CSA is also harnessing cybersecurity R&D, encouraging entrepreneurship and innovation, stimulating sophisticated market demand, and raising product standards through initiatives such as the I-71, Lean Launchpad, Call for Innovation, and the Cybersecurity Labeling Scheme. Next slide, please. Community partners are key to CSA's work to build the cybersecurity profession in Singapore. We work with this, uh, we work with and support professional bodies to build up strong communities of practice in Singapore. Specifically, we work closely with four such organizations. First, the uh, Association of Info Security Professionals, or AISP in short. It's made up of a group of passionate cybersecurity professionals who are active in many communities and professional uh, initiatives. The Singapore Computer Society, where um, Victor and Garin are from, or SES, has a chapter on cybersecurity and helps to deepen the appreciation of cybersecurity among the general ICT workforce. The IAC Square and ISACA are international training and certification bodies. Both have sizable membership in their respective Singapore chapters. Singapore has multiple touch points with uh, an engagement with both organizations every year. Next slide, please. Now, well, it has been said that cybersecurity is a tangless job and you're only put in the spotlight when cyber breaches happen. That was somehow true, but only until three years ago. In 2018, um, we started the Cybersecurity Awards to recognize individuals and enterprises for the right reason, which is the contributions to the cybersecurity ecosystem. A total of 11 associations, including the four shown in the previous slide, came together yearly to organize the annual event to pay tribute and give thanks to our people and our companies. Uh, next slide, please. Reason number seven, we have a growing education and sponsorship opportunities. Over the past six years, all of our polytechnics and universities have created dedicated cybersecurity courses and have been steadily increasing their student capacity. To get, today, more than 800 graduates from cyber, more than 800 people graduate from cybersecurity courses in the in this uh, IHLs every year. Besides dedicated courses in cybersecurity, our IHLs are also offering cybersecurity as an elective or minor for the students pursuing degrees in related disciplines, equipping them with foundational knowledge in cybersecurity. For example, NUS offers a minor in info secu information security as part of other degree courses, including statistics and electrical engineering. Next slide, please. Well, in this slide, I listed three types of scholarship that are pertinent to cybersecurity in Singapore. We have a Spark Nation scholarship for students who want to work in non-defense government agencies and the DSTA scholarship for students aspiring to work in the defense sector. The government also gives out SG Digital scholarships to help build up top talents who want to serve in the industry. Next slide. Well, um, SMS Janil earlier mentioned that uh, the uh, Cyber NS scheme, a uh, Cyber National Scheme, this actually started two, two years ago. Well, instead of carrying rifles, these selected talented young men used a keyboard and mouse to defend their nation. There are two tracks to this uh, cyber scheme. Uh, those in the cyber operators track will complete their NS in a regular two year term. Those in the cyber specialist track will participate in work learn program in either the SIT or NUS for three to four years, earning academic credits, which will count towards the university's degree programs later. Next, please. The last reason, reason number eight, uh, there are clear career and uh, skills development pathways. 
Well, uh, Victor and Gary um, just now provided a good introdu introduction to cybersecurity job roles and career pathways in the talk. Let me elaborate from a slightly different perspective. About four years ago, the Skills Future Singapore has worked with consultants and the industry partners to develop a total of 33 national level skills frameworks for the various industry sectors. The aim was to create a common skills knowledge uh, for individuals, um, for employers, as, as well as training partners. Each of these skills framework helped to explain the career pathways, the job roles, the skill sets, and the training programs for the respective sectors. With the framework, individuals can make informed choices on their education and career. Employers can design uh, human resources uh, development plans for the employees. Universities and training partners can better design the curriculum for the students. Next slide, please. Cybersecurity falls under the skills framework for Infocom technology. In this version of uh, skills framework, which was recently updated, there are seven cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity domain areas ranging from um, sub, uh, governance, risk, and control to security design and engineering. Job roles for each domain are defined together with the career progression pathways leading to the top cybersecurity role of the CISO or Chief Information Security Officer. Next slide. So in this example of the cyber risk analyst job role, the skills framework provides the detailed job description, the job functions and the key tasks. On the right hand side, it provides the skills and uh, competencies as well as the proficiency level required for this uh, the, each of these job role. This, the framework also lists down trainings and certification programs. Trainings will come from international providers such as SANS, IC Square, ISACA, and the UC Council. As you can see, the existing cybersecurity skills framework is focused on the IT domain. But as I explained earlier, Cybersecurity also includes the OT or operational technology domain. So to, ex to address these gaps, CSA is now cons engaging consultant to work with the industry to develop the OT skills framework to complement the framework for, the, for IT security. Um, next slide, please. So this slide summarizes my eight points to answer the question of why cybersecurity. I shall now repeat it. Uh, number one, Cybersecurity has gone mainstream. Second, cybersecurity is a in, in growing sector with good jobs. Number three, cybersecurity is an interesting and diverse field. Number four, together we can stop the bad guys. Number five, cybersecurity is a national priority. Number six, we are growing the cybersecurity ecosystem in terms of industry and jobs. Number seven, there are many education and sponsorship opportunities. And number eight, there are clear um, career and skills development pathways if you choose to come to this domain. Uh, next slide, please. So I come to at the end of my presentation. Uh, next, I would like to invite a special guest uh, uh, who will share with us his uh, journey in cybersecurity. Mr. Tay Gao Jin is currently a year two student in IT College West and is pursuing a higher NITEC in cyber and network security. He appeared in the Straits Times earlier this year for being the youngest person in Singapore to attain the Certified Ethical Hacker or CEH Masters offered by the EC Council. I first met Gao Chin when he, he took part in the inaugural uh, Youth Cyber Exploration Program or YCEP in the, in the picture on the right that was co-organized by the Singapore Polytechnic and CSA in June 2018. Gao Chin and his teammates from the UHA Secondary School were the winner of the mini CTF competition held at the end of the four-day training boot camp. Last year, Gao Chin also won the Gold Award in the Student Volunteer Recognition Program, or SVRP, that was organized by AISP and supported by CSA. So, Gao Chin, may I hand over to you now? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wong, for your wonderful sharing. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'll be sharing with you my cybersecurity journey as a student and why I choose cybersecurity as my course. Without further ado, let me begin by giving a quick introduction about myself. So my full name is Tae Gao Jin. I just turned 18 this year, and I'm currently a second year student pursuing the higher NITEC in cyber and network security in the IT College West. 
Now I'll be sharing with you my cybersecurity journey throughout these two exciting years and feel free to actually ask any question along the way. So many people actually ask me where and what ignited my passion for cybersecurity. Well, today I'm actually here to actually answer them. So my passion for cybersecurity actually started in secondary school. This is my class four and four photo in 2018. I'm actually quite sorry for this uh, very blurry picture. So I hope you are able to actually spot me and I'm actually easy to find. So if you are not able to actually spot me, I'm actually the one standing in the far right corner. So this was actually uh, our final year where we graduated from N levels. So for me, I actually took the normal academic stream. So the secondary school I actually attended was is Iwa Secondary School as mentioned by Mr. Wong. And interestingly, I'm actually not from the Infocom CCA as many people would have thought so. I was actually from a uh, harmonica band. So back in my days, right, Infocom was actually a very popular and oversubscribed CCA. So even though harmonica may not be my first choice CCA, I actually truly enjoy my stay there as a tenor section leader. And as an individual with multiple interests, I guess many people here actually have many different hobbies as well as interests. So music was actually another of my hobbies as is to actually relieve my stress as well as to make me focus on my attention. In addition, the offering of the Enchanted Music Program as an O-level subject, Iwa Secondary School actually also offers applied learning program with the introductory programs such as Scratch and Arduino programming. In the many hats in Iwa Secondary School, two of them was actually a student counselor as well as backstage crew. As I grew to understand where my passion truly lies, which is on technology, I actually transited to full-time volunteering as a leader in backstage crew. So I actually uh, resigned as a student counselor in secondary three, and I joined backstage crew full-time in secondary three. So this is actually where all my real-time action is actually concentrated at. So in backstage crew, I actually set up public announcement system known as the PA system for example, as well as slicing all events, big or small in the school, while actually ensuring also they are actually executed smoothly. So this experience actually brings me back to Ihua as an alumni until today, as it's my belief as an alumni to have the responsibility to actually contribute and give back to our school and communities for what they have actually developed in us. So in secondary school, as mentioned earlier on by Mr. Wong, one of my teacher actually called Ms. Kang, suggested I should join the Youth Cyber Exploration Program, known as YSTAC, which was at Singapore Poly. So this program is actually a four-day cybersecurity bootcamp organized by the CSA and co-organized by the Singapore Polytechnic. This is to actually excite students about the possibility and prospect in cybersecurity. The program actually covers fundamentals in cybersecurity. And at the last day of the bootcamp, there's actually a CTF competition where me and my team actually managed to clinch the champion. So that was actually my first ever uh, cybersecurity CTF competition, which actually really drove me into explore cybersecurity as a student in greater depth. So what actually happens every single year, and I actually highly recommend all school staff to actually give these opportunities for their students to learn cybersecurity. Moving on, so uh, my cybersecurity passion actually continues to ignite and the fire in me in cybersecurity actually continues to burn in a very fast and furious manner. So that's where it brings me to higher learning. So my passion in cybersecurity actually continues in higher learning. And this is actually my class photo QN1904M in 2019. So I'm actually the one squatting in the front row, as you can see from the picture. So the Institute of Higher Learning I'm actually attending now is actually ITD College West. And the CCA, which actually kept my passion burning as a student, is actually the Cybersecurity Club. With great joy, I actually currently hold the president position of this Cybersecurity Club. And in this club, we actually gain knowledge about cybersecurity outside of curriculum hours to actually sharpen our awareness as well as to keep ourselves updated to the evolving technological trends. In addition, I'm actually thankful to be involved in this uh, ACE program where participants actually need to maintain a GP of 3.8 and above, as well as a good discipline records. So in this ACE program, we are actually given these opportunities to participate in enrichment programs outside of our curriculum hours. And for my commitments, 
I actually danced many projects uh, throughout these two years together with my teams. I served as a mentor to years once as well and guide them along the cybersecurity journey. I also actually volunteers for events for both cyber related as, as well as non cyber related, such as Chingay uh, 2019 and 2020. As a contributing members of IT and the cybersecurity community in school, I am involved in outreach to schools and communities to actually raise awareness about cyber safety and public interest in cybersecurity. So as uh, mentioned earlier on by Mr. Wong also, during my time in IT cybersecurity, I'm actually proud to be the first students in IT to actually obtain the certified ethical hacker in both theory and component, uh, practical component, sorry about that. So my practical exam was actually uh, proudly sponsored by EC Council and Research International. They also provided me with a one day training workshop on CH practical. So a really big thank you to them if they're actually uh, listening today and giving me this opportunity to further learn. So throughout this CEH journey uh, with uh, guidance of my lecturers, I actually managed to gain several useful skills and managed to actually attain the younger Singapore CEH master. So I actually took up this CEH as an interest and when I actually mentioned to my section head as well as my lecturer, they are actually quite shocked they are actually willing to take up this certification. So to me, I would actually like to quote that there is no limit to one's learning. It's just a matter if one actually tries. So in education or further learning, I think that all of us here today should not have a limit in their learning. Everyone here can actually learn and try something new, something different. It's just a matter if we actually put in the effort to actually try. So in cybersecurity, we have this uh, very exciting capture the flag competitions we actually mentioned earlier on. This is uh, this capture the flag is actually not what most people think it is. It's not a game where player versus player via shooting means or any other means and try to capture other teams' flags. Instead, this capture the flag competition is a platform where students and industrial uh, security professionals can actually prove their skills using their current knowledge to actually attain to gain a flag by solving questions or compromising a vulnerable machines. So this actually allows students and industrial security professionals to actually sharpen their skills as well as to gain new knowledge throughout this CTF platform. So in my two years of studies in IT cybersecurity, my team and I were actually also happy to work on a very interesting projects. So I think now uh, in many institute of higher learning as well as university, uh, the school actually give an opportunity for students to work on a very interesting project. So right now, I think that most students actually uh, who are actually listening today might already have a project done or is currently working on their project. So these projects can actually benefit others as well as to raise awareness for cybersecurity. And you can also gain new knowledge about cybersecurity along the way. So as you can see from this photo here, my team and I actually managed to recreate IT College West building in a game which almost everyone is familiar with, known as Minecraft. So we actually plan to use this Minecraft together with our virtual IT College West building to actually allow students to learn through gamification as well as to host certain events such as the Amazing Race for our school and capture the flag competitions. So in IT, uh, in cybersecurity, there are actually also many communities and cyber events to actually join and participate in. So one of it is been the Cyber Youth Singapore has been mentioned earlier on, where I actually currently hold the Senior Deputy Directors of Technology Divisions. So in Cyber Youth Singapore, we are actually a non-profit youth organization, which is actually run entirely by the youth with a focus of cybersecurity and seek to empower youth in Singapore with a platform to safely and responsibly explore their interests in technology alongside their peers. So we actually have a Discord server set up for people to actually join. So in this Discord server, we actually provide helpful guidance to each other, as well as the host events and training on cybersecurity. So actually feel free to scan this QR code and hop into our Discord server and take a look. On the bottom right, I actually have a photo together with my friends volunteering for the CrashCon Asia 2019. So this event is actually organized by the Association of Infocom Security Professionals known as the ARSP, where ARSP is actually an independent cybersecurity association that believes in developing, supporting, as well as enhancing industrial technical competence 
and management expertise to promote the integrity, status and interest in Infocom security professionals in Singapore. So they actually believe that should promoting this development increase and spread of cybersecurity knowledge and in any related subject, they actually hope to shape more resilient economies. And finally, on the bottom right, I have a photo of my classmate and I actually volunteering for the Singapore International Cyber Week as known as the SICW. So this event is actually organized by the CSA and I'm actually happy to be part of an exhibitor for the Institute of Higher Learning booth. And throughout this, all these community and events, I'm actually able to gain new knowledge in cybersecurity as a student, as well as do something meaningful for the community. So from all the volunteers and contribution done, we as a students can actually gain prestigious awards such as the Student Volunteer Recognition Program as mentioned by Mr. Wong, by the ARSP, as well as the Internal School Awards such as the Service Award Star by IT, and actually proud to be a Gold Recipient Award for the SVRP as well as the Diamond Award for the Service Star. Moving on, I'm currently uh, engaged in an internship with the Central for Strategic Infocom Technologies, also known as the CSIT, where I actually focus on threat modeling. And thanks to the early admission program, I will actually be embarking on an exciting new journey in Nian Polytechnic next year in the Cybersecurity Digital Forensic course as an April 2021 freshman. So before I actually end my presentation, I will actually like to special thanks the organizer for giving this opportunity to, to uh, actually share with you all here today and not forgetting the list of individuals on this slide for actually playing my part, uh, playing a part in development and growth. So without them, I actually won't be here where I am today. So thank you very much. I will now pass the time back to the MC. Thank you very much to Chun Wong as well as Gao Jun for the interesting topic and to show us how attractive cybersecurity as a profession is with the fast growing market demand. Um, we're just going to hop in for a quick uh, Q&A session right now. I do have this question over here for Mr. Wong in fact. Um, based on the presentation that you gave earlier, uh, there are people who are wondering what are the main cybersecurity talents that you're referring to? Sorry, I'm hearing double. Um, can, can you repeat the question again? Sure. So I, Based on the yeah. presentation that you gave earlier, what are the main cybersecurity talents that you are referring to? Oops. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, Mr. Wong, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, because, okay, can. Right. I need to close some windows before I can hear you properly. No uh, So, yeah, the question is, um, what are the kind of cybersecurity talents yes. we are referring to? Yes. Yeah. Um, so in the context of the slide that, that uh, the question is uh, asking on uh, slide 10, I think we, we are talking about attracting a pipeline of cybersecurity talents. So in this case, the cybersecurity talents I'm referring to is really uh, the people who, the future pipeline, meaning um, the students who, who have shown some interest as well as some attitude uh, and to participate in uh, our uh, actually cyber youth programs and um, and and can, can um, consider cybersecurity as a future career. That's just one type of talents. Then, of course, the other type of talents is that uh, existing uh, professionals who are not in the cybersecurity field, or cybersecurity field, but who has an interest to convert into cybersecurity. So the government also have a, a, a list of uh, uh, career conversion uh, programs where they can um, work with the um, the. the People, uh, the, the professionals can can be or uh, can work in uh, with companies to in uh, on the job training, uh, where the government subsidizes some of these uh, salaries during this period. So uh, we have the seaside program, like what uh, SMS Janio earlier alluded to. So with that, uh, it's very definitely very inspiring to see you know someone so young, the youth, uh, Gaojun over here, to be so dabbled into the cybersecurity space. I'd like to thank both of you once again to Chun Bong as well as Gaojun for your sharing today.